Today we're going to be using the Mongoose Synthetic Wash Brush. These are a one inch, three quarter, and a half inch. Uh, when your brushes are new, they're stiff. Don't break them. What you want to do is put them in some water and just let them absorb the water and they become soft and it removes all that sizing in there that's just for shipping purposes only. So just let them sit in the water for just a minute and then they become very soft and pliable. So I'm going to do that to all of these. Uh, when you remove the caps that are on them, the clear caps, uh, don't try to put those back on. You just want to toss those in the trash or use them for another surface or another technique. So once you've uh, taken the sizing out, then what I'm doing is just blotting it on a paper towel to remove any excess water before I start my decoration. So you could use any of these three sizes to do this, depending on the size surface. I've got an eight by eight tile. I'm gonna use the three quarter inch. And what I'm working with is a greenware tile. And then I have some Colors for Earth products. Uh, these are a couple of different sizes. These are the Cerulean's uh, CC 151, 152, and 150. So these are uh, Cerulean, Light Cerulean, and Deep Cerulean. So what I'm going to do is create a wash out of these products to put in a background. So I'm just going to put a little bit of color. I'm going to, and this is just in a little paint well called the bubble palette and I won't need much you can put it on full strength uh, but always shake your color before you use it and then when you make a wash what you want to do is put water in another area and then add the color to it we're going to start from light to dark so I'm going to pick up some of that a light cerulean, put it in the water, and just kind of mix it. Make sure you thoroughly get all of that color off of the brush, the bristles, and kind of mush it around. And then you can just come in here and uh, it. you could do this with any uh, type of product. It doesn't have to be on ceramics. Maybe you've got um, acrylics, oils, they work great for those. So any type of media that you uh, are using. So I've got some light cerulean on the piece. I'm not going to rinse my brush. I'm just going to pick up some of the cerulean, which is the middle color. Mix that up. Make sure it's completely mixed. Color is heavier than water, so it's going to fall to the bottom of that area that you're mixing. So make sure you constantly keep that mixed up as you're doing your application. So I'm just going to kind of fill in some areas with that color. So these are all like overlapping each other. And then I'm going to go into the deep cerulean, which is a really dark color compared to the other two. So you won't need as much on your brush and added to your water. It won't take much to color it. So this is just a hit and miss. So this is a great way to add a background to things. Okay, I'm gonna rinse my brush. Now, to really see what you've got, I take a small mister bottle and then I just kind of miss that whole thing and that will give you a better idea of what you've got going on there. So you may or may not like that. It just kind of depends and you can come back because it's on greenware, um, you know, and you can soften edges and kind of blend that out let's say that I wanted this darker than it was so I could actually go into the color directly and don't worry about thinning it and you can add maybe this is that lighter color 
So maybe I wanted that color just a little bit darker. I'm going to get a little bit more. And these can overlap because every layer of color that you apply is going to darken that area in value. Okay, as my brush is starting to dry, I'm going to dip just a little bit into water. And now I'm going to go into that middle one. And I'm going to do the same. Just kind of add it here and there. Now, I'm not going to go directly into the darker one. I'm going to go back into that wash and just add some of that again. Okay, so like you said, you can just do some simple backgrounds. If you don't like an area, just take a damp brush and water and you can soften those edges if it looks too harsh but I think this will be great uh, for a background you can fire this to bisque and then come back you could stamp on it uh, you could do brush strokes you could do carving there's tons of different things that you could do so again these are the mongoose synthetic washes this is series 8700, and this was the three quarter inch. So they have three different sizes, one inch, half inch, and the three quarter. So it's a little stiffer uh, than say a sable, but it also allows you to create some texture on the piece. You could even dry brush with this. Uh, you could float color. Uh, let's, let's float some color while we're doing this. So if I wanted my edges to be darker, when you float color, you're going to water load, drag off to get rid of the excess water. Make sure that that brush is definitely clean. Drag, drag. And then what I like to do is keep the writing of the brush towards me and I'm going to corner load so that I have a little bit, say a third, no more than a third of the brush. And then I'm going to blend on my palette quickly, flip it over, color next to color, and blend. So if I wanted to go in and shade, say, the outer edge of this, I would start up here at the top, press down, and pull along that edge. And then I'm going to go back using the other side of the brush. So you can kind of see that there's a shadow. We've got, I've got one area here that um, there's a dip in this particular tile, so it didn't grab there. Rinse that color out, same thing. Drag off to remove the excess water, right into the brush towards you. Corner load. Blend on your palette. Blend. And then I'm going to turn my piece. And I'm going to come down this side. And then I flipped my brush over and I'm going to go back. Again, clean that brush, pull out the excess water riding towards me, corner load, no more than a third, blend, and you blend quickly so that. Um, your product doesn't start drying, your water doesn't evaporate. Pressure all the way down on the bristles. Now as I got to the end, I tend to run out. This is a large area. So I just grabbed what was on my palette there where I was blending. And I'm going to rinse this brush. If you don't have enough product, enough moisture, you may not be able to go the full length of the area you're trying to do. So I usually go one direction and then come back and go the other direction. That way you don't have a start and stop point on 
um, your area, the edge in this case. Constantly rinse, riding the brush towards, looking up towards me. Blend, blend, and start at that corner. Come down, I'm gonna flip it over, and just run back across it real quick. Okay, so that's a way to frame an area or your piece. You could do the sides uh, doing the same thing. So consider the Mongoose Synthetic Wash, three quarter inch, uh, to do some background techniques. Okay, so what I'm doing is applying some wax, wax on. This is by Mr. Marks. Uh, you can find it online. This is the purple one. Uh, so what I did was put some here. Let's just do some more. So add that to a container. Uh, about 70% wax to 30% water. Mix it up. And then I'm just using a one inch foam brush. And I've already uh, prepared this background with kind of a watercolor technique. I've shaded the edges. So now what I want to do is protect that so that I can do some scraffito or carving. It dries fairly quick. Um, the other thing that you want to do, or what I'm going to do, is I am going to protect my edges. Just so that if I bump it, or just so I don't scratch and remove my color. So what I've done is uh, put the deep cerulean around that edge. So you can kind of see as it's starting to dry, it becomes matte. I'm just going to, since I've got some here in my cup, I'm going to just add a quick little second coat just to make sure I've got everything covered. Okay. Rinse your brush with water and uh, allow this to dry and you'll be ready to do your carving. Okay, so what I've got here is a greenware ginger jar, okay? So there's a metal ring that goes on here, and the two pieces fit inside that, and it's like a hinged box. So what I'm going to do is put some uh, wax on this one so that I can do some carving, and it'll protect the rest of the areas, and then I can create a color inside that uh, carve. This is wax on. It's a resist by Mr. Marks. And what I've done is put some in a little cup, 70% of the wax, 30% water. And then I'm just using a foam craft brush. And I'm going to apply a coat. So this is, uh, you have to let it dry till it's not tacky, but it's uh, it doesn't make it a real, real hard. It allows you to carve through that. It will burn away. So this is how I prep the piece for doing carvings, graffito, uh, whatever you want to, whatever type of carving you want to do on it, okay? And, of course, I just locked myself in. I'm going to sit it down so that I can do the rest of these areas. If you're going to carve on the bottom, uh, say for your signature, you can apply it there also. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. And then this is the lid. So 
So this is a resist that will allow us to carve and then apply color in those carved lines. And it will make sense when I show you the rest of the process. Okay, so let that dry. And I'm just applying this to regular um, 0406 earthenware that was cast. Just make sure that all of your area is covered. You can see it's already starting to dry. And there's just a thin coat on there to protect the wear. I'm just kind of using what's in the brush to get rid of it. Okay. And that's already dry. It's not even damp anymore. So I can set that down. All right. I will be back to show you the next process. Okay. So I have uh, the wax on it that we put on. That was the Mr. Marks wax on. It's a resist. Okay, so then what I did was I sketched out a pattern. I laid tissue paper over the pattern, transferred it, or drew over the top of it with a pencil. And now I'm going over the pencil markings with an ultrafine Sharpie marker. And so that will cause it to transfer. I'm not going to transfer like all of the little veins because I'll just do those freehand, but they're there for you if you want to transfer it. So you can see that it makes a little bit of a uh, very light pattern, which is great. It's a guide so that we can carve. And you, you're not gouging. This is just all on the top surface. Alright, so I'm going to transfer all of this. And I'll be right back. Okay, so let's zoom in just a little bit so you can kind of see the lines. So make sure you've got um, paper towel, plastic, something underneath you to catch any crumbs. I am going to use the Kemper. WS tool, which is a wire stylus. You can see it's a very fine wire. And I'm just going to pick a point and start. I am going to carve three times in that area. And I'm going to take a soft brush and I'm going to dust away any of the crumbs. Now if you didn't want the line really deep, you could just go once.
So you see how I added the side veins? Let's come in a little bit closer. Okay, so the wax protects the coloring I've already put down. Some of these smaller lines, I'm not going to go multiple times. I'll just make sure I have a good carving. So you can make little turn backs. This is on 04 Greenware. Just a regular ceramic slip cast tile so what I'm finding is um, with the wax on here I'm not having as much chipping that I might have if I were just doing it directly on the greenware that's dry So that is nice.
So I'm just doing small areas. So some of them I'm carving three times to get a different depth. And like when I did those fine lines coming out from the center, those I just did one time. And because there's wax on this clay, don't try to save any of your shavings because they have wax in them. Don't add those to anything else. dust out any crumbs you can kind of see there just double check that you've got all your lines coming out from your open flowers the ones that are um, small buds they don't have the lines because the lines are on the inside not the outside and I would sign somewhere. We're going to get rid of the dust. Then I'm going to just take a round replacement pottery sponge. Just gently go over it so you can kind of see what the background looks like. Alright, so then what we're going to do is take that same sponge and I'm going to take the darkest color that I used, which was the uh, 152. <laughs>
then I will take um, the large sumi brush. These are my sumi brushes. Um, they're available on coloursforearth.com. Always wet that brush first. Blot it on a paper towel to remove any moisture. Mine's extremely dry. Oops. Alright, so then you're going to take some of that color and we're going to slightly thin that color just with a little bit of water. What that does is just going to make it go down in the crevices. Try to brush all in different directions just to ensure that you're getting it down in all the crevices. So in essence what you're doing here is you're antiquing the carved lines that you've put in there. The wax is protecting the background which you put on first then we waxed over and then we will wipe back the excess and the wax will burn off in the firing. So I'm using Color Concentrate CC152 Deep Cerulean. This is a translucent underglaze. It's what uh, one of the colors that I put on the background. You could do it with black if you wanted your design to be black and more pronounced. I'm just going to use the darkest shade of what I put underneath and I actually shaded around the edges of this tile with this also. Double check that you've got all those little crevices. Okay, then take your sponge. start on the end that I've done. You can see that it's staying down in the crevices. You do want to make sure that you get it off so I'm turning my sponge over using the clean side. Because anything that's on there is going to beat up and possibly transfer to your wear. So we're going to blot and get that excess off of there. See how much was still on there. And then just kind of gently wipe. You don't want to put too much pressure because you don't want to take anything out of your crevices. And I did wax uh, the sides also. So turn your piece, double check, 
see if you see any white spots. So Sometimes it's those smallest areas that doesn't seem to grab or the areas that maybe we didn't carve quite as deep. So those might need that little extra. And also, if you leave it sitting on there a little bit longer, it'll absorb. But the reason we need that uh, water is to thin it down so that it is going in the crevices. Because if it's too thick, it can't get in the tiny areas. I'm going to thin this one down. Just kind of go over those again. So I'm just hitting those fine lines that were in the leaves. I'm going to leave this. I think I wiped it too soon. And we'll let it set there. A little bit longer. Okay, so I'm going to use a diamond core tool. Um, I have never used this before. So it has two different ends. One is a smaller, one's a larger. It's like a football type shape. And this is the L3, it says on the handle. See that? Let me turn on the light there. There you go. L3. Okay, so I'm going to carve this one just like I did the other one. I've tried to kind of sketch on a design, but um, I'm just going to kind of wing it. This tool being new to me, I don't feel like I have as much control. So this was the small end. I'm using. And I'm just going to do the outline because when I decorate um, later, I can add even more detail.
remember that pattern. I just kind of sketched it on. So I'm kind of doing my own thing. I'm going to do this same thing all the way around and then I'll determine. So I am building this as we go here. I like how fine the lines are. So 112 candy apple red, slightly thinned with some water, just so that this can flow. Earlier, I was using the wire loop tool. I don't know what I got on me, but anyway, you can see this, I think. And somebody was asking as far as how do you hold the tool to carve? Okay, so I'm going to turn this one over and I'm going to show. So I lay this on the flat. So Jean Kidwell, I think, was asking this earlier. If you're if you get on here, you'll see this. So lay the tool, and when you're putting a little bit of pressure on there, it basically creates a channel. Okay, you don't want to turn it on the side. You want it on the flat so you see the open wire. 
Is that still clear, guys? Brenda, lots better. I can see the lines. Awesome. Awesome. Okay. Okay. Yes, it, so what this does is carve into it. So what I did was I applied color, I put wax on, you can go back to that other video, and I wanna just show a little more of the carving. That way you guys can see it, there won't be um, blurriness. I'm gonna zoom in a little bit more. Okay, so this is the Diamond Core tool that I was showing earlier. This is the L3. It has a large end and a small end. And I'm going to lay it down here so you can kind of see it. So you can see they're different sizes and they're like a football shape is what they call it. Okay. So depending on the size line that you want. So on this particular piece here, I used the wire loop tool on this one and when I did my vase. So these lines were carved with the diamond with the small end. So see the difference in the lines? You've got thick lines, you've got skinny lines. So it really depends. Now this tool is expensive. This is like $48. Okay. It'll last, yeah, yeah, and Robin is talking to me in my ear so that, um, yeah, it's a diamond bit, so it's going to last. It allows you to carve through that wax even easier than what the wire look, because it's sharper. It's got a diamond bit. It's like itty bitty, let's see if that can focus. I'm not sure it can focus that far up. There we go. Yeah, it, it, to my knowledge, it will last forever. I am new to this tool, but I wanted to share it with you so that you guys could see the difference and how clean. So let me just get in focus here with the camera. And so I'm just going to take the tool and scratch away the wax that's here. And if you want it a deeper line, you would go into it a second time. And then you would dust off the excess and you get a nice fine line. Then I would come over here on this side. So you, I like to do it in sections. So I'm going over it three times. All that does is make the channel deeper. So it really depends. Do you need three times around? Probably not. It just depends on how much texture you want on your piece is all it makes a difference. So what I did there was just create those fine lines coming out from the center. I think you can see that good. And I'm going to create the leaf. So I'm carving through the wax. I'm carving through the color all the way down to the green where I am using cast piece that is 0406. So low fire ceramics, uh, the same thing could be done on your mid range, which is your cone five, cone six. I'm using, uh, I'll reiterate again. I used 150, 151 and 152, which are all of the cerulean colors. Okay. These are color concentrates. I created a wash in the background. Okay, like this here, you can kind of see some of it. Now this I actually brush stroked on. So if you didn't want to carve, you could just transfer the pattern and brush stroke on. So after I had this wash on the greenware, then I applied the wax. The wax is by Mr. Marks. Wax on resist. So it will burn off in the kiln. Okay, so all it did was protect what I put down first, the background. So it will allow me to transfer a pattern using the Sharpie, and then I can carve through it. Okay, um, and all I did as far as, if you missed it earlier, the uh, wax, I put some in here, I added a little bit of water, I just used a foam brush, 
and I went across the piece and I can do one line here. I think you can see that. So I just applied the wax and it's going to beat up on here because it already has wax on it. So it's a way to protect that background that I've got on there. Okay. So I'm going to just continue to carve here and I'm using this small end. They have quite a few different tools. Uh, what I was saying earlier is if you're not a part of the group called Clay Share, which is where I did the Clay Share Con, um, what has it been, a month ago now, um, they have a great Facebook group. They also have um, a membership group, and you get to be in the Prime, and there's advantages to that Prime membership. And this is just... Uh, Jessica had this on one of her free tutorials. You can find her also on YouTube. She is Jessica Phillips Putman. Go check her out. A wealth of information. Very knowledgeable. Um, and I've been looking for a wax. So this was perfect. And so this is a take on what she calls her Mishima technique. And I'll explain why. But she's got all kinds of free videos. But she also has the Prime Membership. And it's like $129 for the year, which, guys, that is dirt cheap for everything that she gives you. So check it out. She has more detailed carving videos. I'm just showing you the Paula way that I'm using it. Okay, there's multiple ways that you can use it. So once you get your areas carved, then to get the color in it, what I did was I took... Uh, water on my sumi brush and this is the deep cerulean and what you do let me blow which I shouldn't be blowing get all the dust off of there and what you're doing is now you come back and the wax is protecting your design and you're applying the color in there you could put black if you want black lines I just thought it would be kind of cool to keep it monochromatic and do the blue lines. So she has a YouTube channel. Follow her. I mean, it's just phenomenal. I joined. Uh, because, I, you know, I don't know everything. There's things that I can learn, too. So once you get the color on there, you can let it set. And that was pretty thinned down. You can see right here where I did it earlier. This is the one I showed on the live broadcast. So once that has set in there, then you just take a damp sponge and wipe it back. And look at that. Is that awesome? It goes down in there. Now take a paper towel and wipe off the excess because when that wax burns away, whatever color's on it is gonna roll or bead up. And you don't want that to fall on your piece somewhere else. And then these are the same colors that I used here and I used here. So unfired, this is the greenware, this is the bis that's been fired to 04. Now I can come back and I can uh, clear glaze, I can uh, put a speckled glaze on it. There's so many different things you can do. And what I didn't show in the earlier broadcast was, let me get some more color out. And I'm going to zoom back out just a little bit. Okay. Get some of the darker. This is the deep cerulean. So we can do what I call my sumi shade, water load, tip into the color. You've got a little bit on the brush. And you could go back in here now and you can add more color if you wanted. So it's a way to protect your original design. And when this is dry, then you can glaze it. And you could put a speckled uh, clear. We have a clear blue speck if you wanted that. But look at that. I mean, there's so many more things you can do with it. Or you could color it uh, with the lighter blue. Isn't that cool? Yeah. It, it was my vision, you know, and <laughs> I, uh, I put the wax, I've got a hair on the end of that. I put this wax on here before I left on my trip last week. So it was on there a week ago. 
okay? And I did fine with it. Now, um, follow Jessica. She has other, uh, she likes to do leather hard. So everybody does things differently. This is just the way it's working for me on ceramics, 0406 ceramics. But look at that. Is that cool? And you can just add a little bit of shading even on the leaves the same way. And you've totally changed the look.